Welcome to Flat Earth Early Bird number 469. I'm your host Arwin and before we start the show please don't forget to share it on any platform you deem fit and if you haven't already subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm going live which is normally 2 p.m. Amsterdam time every day. Please also do support me through the PayPal, Patreon, my GoFundMe and the Super Chat. That would be much appreciated. So yeah, today the weather is again <laughs> completely different. It's just there's no real big clouds or anything, no rain. It just seems to be this... Yeah, just one big gray cloud bank out there. So... It's not really that cold even. There's no wind. It's just gray. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, there's no smoke. It's just... Just cloudy or uh, thin clouds but everywhere I don't think it's chemtrails either I don't know what it is exactly it's just typical yeah these types of weather days have been uh, been there before in the last month so nothing special anyway let's see who is in chat I got green tea by the way uh, yeah AGM was first dank over McCall, Tom Parker, Julio Pabin, Mark Collard. Yeah, good to see you all. First few, <laughs> yeah, slipping in, cause I did kind of oh S uh, Sarita Cosentino, right? Yeah, good morning. Cause I started up the or I rather opened up the hangout to be a hangout pretty much a minute before two so yeah usually when I do that people drop in a little later because people don't get the pre notifications if they get any I don't even know if they do but mm. <sighs> so how are you all doing Right. Yeah, I've been uh, been quite active yesterday. Since uh, what did I do? Letters debates was not super on the forefront. Didn't really need to. Uh, right. Oh yeah, and then afterward, at some point, I don't even remember how late that was, but I got onto the twenty four seven letters Discord channel. And it was active for quite a while there. I, I think uh, Amanda Young picked that up. Oh yeah, Chocolate Sane was in there as well for a few moments. But I was, yeah, I was quite on a roll. Uh, it started out kind of, uh, yeah, putting down some, uh, basically some attack on a, a specific troll that's just, yeah. It's gone the same path as Trish Blythe, pretty much. I could compare it to that type of character progress. <laughs> progress, right? So I'm not even going to mention his name. But yeah, everywhere else I go, he's always, he's like the worst troll now ever. <laughs> and he's like, seems like negatively upset. I think he like wants to beat me up or something. And yeah, it's, it's mutual. So, because he just won't let it go. That makes me want to psionically strangle him, which is kind of what I did, because I put down a half hour rant pretty much straight out, exposing his character and 
his deepest struggle that he wants no one to see. And yeah, as expected, he went completely ape shit in chat pretty much ever after. Non-stop attacking my character for like an hour, even half an hour after we stopped talking <laughs> about him. <laughs> Just kept it up. I really, really seriously triggered him. Not that I'm proud of that. I just want people like that to just because they're not they're not gonna progress. It's blatantly up they they don't want to. They're just gonna shit all over anything, so maybe the best course for those type of individuals is to just burn themselves out. So, yeah. You know who good servant. He's been in here as well. He was super chatted me uh, what some time ago, and then he went completely nuts. I think it was over him criticizing Owen Benjamin for something, calling him a shill or something stupid. No, not even. No, Ivan is just a, it's a Marxist weirdo. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I was quite active there. Ah, yeah, George got it. I think he was there in chat. Anyway, yeah, we had a... Ivan. <laughs> we had a... Or we, not me and him, but uh, other... Because he... The guy doesn't even come out of chat. He's just... Uh, you know. Anyway, I had conversation there with was it Lemon Bird and oh yeah, the, a lady. I don't, I, I don't really know any of them that well except for Lemon Bird. It used to be called Our Rave. Uh, and it was a really good conversation and talked about a lot of things, psychological things. Uh, I don't remember every single detail what we call, talked about because after that I just moved on and I think mostly we were talking about the mechanics of mind control and how the typical unaware person responds to that. I've been into that a lot recently, I know. It's like my new condensed project because it is extremely difficult to explain the intricacies, the intricacies of the fooled mind. It's very difficult to explain that without resorting to frustration-driven oversimplification. Because that is what everybody tends to do on, in general. Because it is just so bizarre what these people have contracted themselves into. The puzzle that they've contracted like a disease. Well, it's not really, yeah, it's just like a spell. So, yeah. I've always found mind dwellings and what happens and what happens to the consciousness very interesting and fascinating as a phenomena by itself, as a human phenomena. And so I, I talk about it, try to see it, how it works and well, find a way to more effectively break it to the pr to really dispel it on the spot instead of just causing the standard reaction for the person to wander off and dwell in their own in their own in their own delusions because that's usually what happens with people that have that are driven by delusion. So, but my idea is maybe if we could truly put down the picture so perfect that it cannot be unseen as it were that it'll just dispel the whole situation to them maybe I don't know it's, it's just a feeling I guess in a way from my own experience I could conclude that it doesn't it it's not the ultimate solution to do that because I myself have been confronted over my lifetime many times 
with very harsh realities as it were or well realities with a coat of painting on them to kind of nudge them a little bit more into a certain direction but even without the paint I just would not accept it so I was in this in my own spells as my own way but it was there to protect me because what I was trying to develop in myself simply could not touch to that level or it would shatter apart But, yeah, now I'm talking about processes that have happened in the last 20 years or more. 30 years, rather. So, I don't know if what I experienced during my pre yeah, previous time in my life, if, if, if the situation could even be compared anywhere, because we didn't have the internet, not to this level, not like this. Nobody really knew what was coming. A, a few... Techno wizards, early techno, they knew what was coming. They knew it. Other people had no idea. They thought, oh, wow, information age, Ooh, you could find anything. But they would only see the, the superficial consequences, the ease, easy contact, all that, and the trolling, even so people saw that coming. But they didn't understand yet how it, the constant acceleration of connection does other things as well and kind of helps to raise consciousness even and an insight so that's what i'm pointing at right now oh oh wow <laughs> thanks julio pavan that's very nice i'll check it out it's hmm. a nice surprise And thanks for the super chat donation as well, by the way. Oh, nice. 20 euros. Thank you, Julio Pabin, for the generous donation. Thank you very much. That is awesome. And yeah, I can definitely use it. I'm not in any danger zone yet, but I know how it works. <laughs> Like especially uh, from a week from now, it's always typically the same. Anyway, thank you so much for the two dollar super chat donation and the PayPal. Very, very much appreciated. Um, where was I? Uh, right, the unexpected consciousness ascension as a side effect of advanced internet, social media, and all that. And while what is very much upfront and almost like a culture is the trolling, is the misbehavior, is the overreaction, is the overdramatization, is the attention desperate, attention whining, like up to just maniacal levels. That is kind of what we see. That's the exoteric, basically the garbage that is excreted on the outside. So that is the more visible part, you know? You always see the darkness first in a complex process. Got to remember that. But at the same time, people that have learned to not become that, not become the, the excreted junk that is very visible, that have actually moved beyond, they suddenly have rooms in their minds and they can suddenly use that room to a much an unexpected level of freedom even within a, a potentially trapped kind of life you know through the internet the mind has more freedom than it could have without it because of the just how far you can reach and what you can find if you're looking and that has caused this yeah, consciousness ascension. Or it helped it. It definitely helped it. And we should use that while it's still there. Because just because we see and we know how precious these, these opportunities have been, this open internet has been, does not mean that it will not be taken away from us at some point. 
if we don't prevent that because the ascension in essence benefits the ascending the most and those that are really the controllers they have went through their consciousness ascension and went through falling in all the contracts so they do not have that freedom and that kind of causes a ego imbalance and that's the problem on the long run so while the light ones ascend the dark ones grow more restless and more agitated they don't think we deserve it because we have not given up everything to get control that line of thought that reasoning technically doesn't make sense but it makes sense to them because they don't see beyond that level anymore because it's all been destroyed to maintain control it's been handed over to a, a, a machine so just trying to point out the settings for this conscious awakening mm. right I also saw a pretty good video today uh, yeah uh, an elaborate video concerning chemtrails or centered mostly around that but it was not just exclusive only chemtrails it was a very deep wide video with a lot of reference a lot of video material it was from research flat earth that channel and the video is called look up i i even downloaded it to my computer because it was that good and I'm gonna post it in chat so you can check it out as well it is kind of unnerving in a way it is really a reminder how how much of the chemtrail sayings that are going around just uh, all the, the super people that kind of believe in chemtrails and not have even not necessarily even dug through all the things that have happened have all the video but just on the surface people kind of echo these things but this video shows you where a lot of those things come from it is a very condensed video with a lot deep reaching info and I definitely recommend you watch it it is not even half an hour long it's very much worth it yeah and it's the end of the video approach I got a bit unnerved I haven't completely finished it yet I'm now at the 23 minute marker and there's still roughly five more minutes but uh, yeah I was impressed by that video so check it out on the research flat earth channel don't I don't exactly know even who it is but he has some he or she I take it it's he some really good videos every now and then oh ha 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 how funny AGM funny Anyway, I'm gonna now seriously look in chat. I've talked for pff, 20 minutes on end. Let's see what you guys are saying. Yeah, AGM, stop the potty mouth mean it if you're in that kind of mood then please just don't touch your keyboard
it, oh matrix put that is a mirror of a video fish matrix who's fish matrix i never heard of that huh it it didn't say the the channel didn't say it was a mirror so i didn't assume it was but The link doesn't work? What? It should work. Let me post it again in another format. What is this? Dank, what did you link? Uh, yeah, that video doesn't work. Oh, right. Yeah, vaccines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this movie, or the video that I linked to, also addresses a little of that, I think. Yeah, I, I tried it, Dank. See, it. it's a... Is it an invideo.us site? I don't know what that is. But I see, it's a DD... Did he a commenter or is this her channel? I don't know. George Sanford, Tim Trails could be a cover for something much more deep. Yeah, and underneath that layer is another layer, and underneath that layer is another layer, and underneath that layer is another layer, and then when that layer is lifted up, it'll be revealed that everything ever you've ever experienced was all one giant illusion. Everything. From the moment you were born. How about that? Is that... Does that help you <laughs> when I put that down? Is that a fruitful train of thinking to go down that path? How about that? Every word, every thought, every sound, every smell, every sense, every concept, everything ever was all an illusion. How about that? Is that something that would be good to ponder on that? Is that going to help the experience? Think about it. But look, all the things that are done, all of the, the, the chemtrails and the vaccines and even the climate alarmism nonsense, all of it. You see the surface, you draw the conclusions, then you see who is in there, then you see how they're connected, and then you see other layers of motivation, then you see what drives them and what controls them, and then you see another layer, and then you see what that control is and then you see where it's all coming from and where it's all going and then there's nothing left nothing so what is the point what is the point does it even matter if you know all the ways they are using it 
How about the general setting? That they are doing it. And that all of us are one way or the other allowing it to happen. One way or the other. And yeah, I bet you. Nations unite. All the people, giant votes, like everyone. Imagine that suddenly all the liberals and all the conservatives in the world would suddenly all unite in a massive realization. Uh, these chemtrails need to stop. You are causing climate change. You are poisoning us. You are fucking up our world and our minds. Guess what's going to happen? You think that's going to make it stop? See? That's the issue. The only real test is how much will it take before it will break? The only way to win a battle that you cannot win by fighting is by not playing the game. But what do you do then? Well, guess what? That's what we're here to figure out. Because everything we're going to be handed to, to us as a suggestion what to do is not going to be it. Because it will all be derived from the problem in the first place. Yeah, so we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. We're stuck between Lucifer and Ahriman. Can you find that middle path? Can you find the way through? The absolutely impossibly Implus impossibly, seemingly impossibly complex solution that you cannot yet fathom. Can you find it? Or are you gonna get bogged in the problems handed to you by Lucifer and Ariman? Are they, is that gonna take the energy away from actually finding that solution? So, enough of that. Let's get back to Flat Earth or something. I see Professor Phil Bell is here. So, let's get the back and forth smacking going. Because I need a little polarization for myself after just looking that freaking deep and putting it down like that. Um, so what do you got? Satellites in orbit! Oh god, I needed that. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> well, look, Karen B, satellites are balloons. Well, just think about it. Professor Philbell said that is science, so... Specifically, what satellites is he referring to? Is he referring to the satellites as part of the conceptual framework of how the world and the universe and everything is supposed to work according to him in his mind? Or does he actually have real world examples with empirical proof beyond he used to build one and then he believes it was launched in a rocket? So... That would be good to hear, Professor Phil Bell, if you got anything beyond that.
Yeah, I'm not even gonna address the concept of science with that because, look, science is the scientific method, but yeah, since futurism, you know, it's just that the Western society or, you know who I mean, those people, they literally just kidnapped, raped, and enslaved the world. Science to become a cultural phenomena as part of keeping the general public spellbound to the futurism illusion. So yeah, of course they're always gonna call it science. You got, you can't... If you keep tr triggered about that, it, it's just gonna hold up everything because they will never concede. You know this. Doesn't matter how many times you point them at the facts. They will never concede. They will always resort back to absolute freedom, either saying science doesn't prove anything or anyone can do science. Science is so easy, you can prove anything with it you like. And then if you don't like what somebody's proven with science, you just disprove it because in the end, everything cannot be proven with science. That is what it is. And it'll not change. It's not gonna change. As long as the globe religion persists, that is how it will be forever. It's never gonna change. No matter how many times you point it out, no matter how many times we literally show the original text, the original, it doesn't matter. They will never concede, ever. Because they need it. It's a, it's a cornerstone. The scientific revolution, the cultural revolution stemming from futurism in order to unhinge scientific principles into a more conceptual, wider fantasy room for people to dig into and play with is a critical, a critical part of maintaining the illusion. It's a critical foundational part of maintaining the globe illusion. So it's never gonna change, ever, ever. Doesn't make it real though, it just means it's never gonna go away. Yeah, you know, in the end, the real science is very, very tight, uh, very specific, and it is kind of the bottom skeletal foundation to stabilize all knowledge throughout all discoveries and to guide engineering in its reality. And that is basically what rich, real scientific method science is. And... Right, there is more than just a scientific method, just saying. There is engineering, there is testing. Empiric testing is probably one of the most reliable methods of gaining knowledge that we have beyond the scientific method. And this is kind of a practical thing, and even the people that uphold the globe know this <laughs> and they adopted that principle as a philosophy in their culture it's not the method anymore it's not steps no in their culture their futurism culture they uphold that principle that yeah we have progress from testing things empirically we don't need the scientific method have you heard that before anywhere? Mm, because it's real. They do that and it does work. But yeah, it doesn't take away that science is the scientific method and that it has been bypassed and manipulated into a broader cultural phenomena, a myth for people to follow a dream and to relinquish their oversight to a system 
that'll keep feeding them that dream, a giant, giant puzzle of unimaginable largeness and incredible powers and insignificance and extremities. It's all conceptual, so therefore it can be like that. Endlessness can potentially exist in the imagination, just cannot exist in reality. Mm. Oh, by the way, thank you, John M., for the 10 Canadian dollar super chat donation. Continue the fight. You see right. Creator bless you from my heart. Thank you. Nice icon, by the way. Uh. Ooh, lots of science fiction talk in my chat, I see. What a strange thing you said there, misled. Why does NASA always cheer like cheerleaders? Do they? Do they though? I don't know. <laughs> On the other hand, I guess that NASA is kind of directed against kids a lot. So maybe they're just trying to use engagement strategy. If you're cheery, if you're happy, that's going to rub off on little children. So maybe that's where the reason why they act like cheerleaders. Not sure though, it's just a theory. concept it's tough to step away from the word theory <laughs> yeah at it you know john has been extremely rigorous basically cutting down all other uses of words beside the scientific method original one so i would concede that the word hypotheses would specifically apply to the scientific method but a theory however I don't agree with that. Although technically it may be valid that he says that, it's just a theory. Well, it's like an, it's a framework idea, a concept that could potentially be tested. Why would that only be applicable to the scientific method? That makes no sense to me. Like what the hell else are you going to call it then? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so a theory, if it is really a scientific theory, then it should be set full out. It should be set full out every time. If it's a scientific theory, you got the science to back up the theory scientifically, then it should absolutely never be taken out of the saying. You should always say scientific theory, scientific theory scientific theory never just theory because theory basically means conceptual framework idea a concept that could potentially be tested potentially that's what it means to me i think that's what it means to most people even intuitively now whether that is good that it does that i don't know but that's how it seems to work right now and i'm just not willing to burn it all down in favor of only looking at words as they have originally been used. Just, 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 I can't do it. Not like that. But it is very important to not fool around with the word theory as a scientist or researcher and then just mix up a conceptual framework idea that could be tested with an actual scientific hypothesis based theory those there should be just clear distinguishment between them it's very frustrating that they can be mixed up and that they are being mixed up it's very frustrating 
because it it kind of takes you off the off the sharp focus every time that happens it's confusing because it it and it takes away the clarity of what is really technically meant yeah uh good servant yeah i'm more fluent in dutch but i think that i have a wider more readily available vocabulary for english just because of everything that i've done with it but i'm i can speak incredibly quick dutch like really terribly quick but i don't want it <laughs> Did you guys catch any of that? I don't know if I think I did it in like the after show on the debate somewhere. I did just a few I said a, a minute of Dutch after people started complaining that I would always pause so long and then Nathan said, Yeah, it's because it's Dutch and I said, Yeah, exactly, because this is what happens when I talk Dutch. I can stuck non top <laughs> No, I cannot speak Chinese. AGM, it's it's lame. Well, Chinese is not lame, but I can't. Right, it was on Nathan's. No, I'm not gonna curse people in Dutch. I think Dutch cursing is very vile and disgusting. When I see Dutch people truly cursing, makes me hate them a lot because I think Dutch cursing is pretty disgusting even compared to English cursing Dutch is worse there's more nastiness behind it I can't explain it maybe it's just my personal experience <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean Thorhill agreed. No, no satellite boxes with the uh, solar panels and everything. That's never. I've never seen that come across the moon before. There are th weird things though, like the seeming metallic spheres that just boing, that kind of stuff. It's like, what is that? <laughs> and to be fair, I haven't really seen satellites either. I think that satellites may simply be, if they're up there, and they might be, I think they're literally out of visual range. Uh, uh, uh. But how can it be? We can see the sun, right? We can see the moon, right? Oh yeah, they're at the edge of vision, like I've been saying for three, four years. And the edge of vision, it has a limit. <laughs> so yeah, what if the, you see, the, just imagine you are here. You have a, a, a limit of sight bubble around you. You will see the globe of the heavens on them. Well, guess what? What if, right, you're here, the bubbles, the end of vision is there. Well, what if the set loons hang over here? Yeah. That's going to mean that you're going to see the moon or the sun or whatever. It's going to be very bright. But yeah, that thing, it's going to be out of visual range. How about that? That would make some sort of sense to me. Okay, well, Chris Berry, yeah, I have seen set loons too. I've seen the on the news and like them being let up and all that yeah but have you ever seen one hanging there in front of the moon or in front of anything no never i've never ever seen it ever 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 so yeah either there's absolutely nothing up there it seems very unlikely since we have seen balloon launches with satellites so the alternative approach to me is they're literally out of sight range there is no possible way you could see them 
from the earth. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. They're, they're simply going to be at such a distance that refraction, the real refraction, is going to blur up things so that after a certain point you only see a gray soup. And a gray soup technically means everything that is light-wise visually there is going to be uniformly blurred up into a singular color. And that's going to be a backdrop. So things may be there, you will just not see them. I think that is the case and why we don't see set loons up there. And why we will never ever even technically be able to see satellites floating up there in orbit. Even if that was a technical possibility. Because sight does not allow it. <laughs> mm, right Tom Parker, yeah it was awesome I know. It was epic wasn't it? Uh, no, Professor Philbell, do not, don't you dare take my words out of context to benefit your own little dream. Don't you dare, buddy. That's not what I said at all. I was talking about the limit of vision. It's not about how mechanical things and planned structures can work or not work. No, that's your little fantasy. I did not even address that. Because I don't need to. Because it wasn't the subject that I was talking about. I was talking about why don't we see it at all. Anything. Well, because it's out of the sight limit. There's no possibility to see beyond. That's why I think we don't see them. Yeah. Really? Karen B, you did? Well, I've heard that, like the ISS thing, it is so weird. I, I cannot explain that. I literally cannot explain what that is, why we even saw anything. I believe you. I've seen some weird stuff on YouTube as well, but I cannot explain it. I cannot explain it without literally jumping to extremities that's just gonna cause most people to immediately jump off and say yeah it's a hologram being projected up there and it's very advanced it's future high-tech stuff that is way out of the range of what we'll ever be allowed to know ever so it's just gonna be there and if they stop take they're never gonna tell us how they do it ever they would rather kill every single human being on the world probably no, they'll never tell us, but they may stop doing it. They may just put the trick back in the box. That's my, my thought on that. And I don't really need to expand on that because other than that, I literally cannot explain what that is. Cannot explain it. Except for it there is no other way than it has to be trickery of some kind because it makes no damn sense whatsoever no physical sense no optical sense doesn't make any sense Yeah. Okay, Bait 60 RMC. Well, yeah, the the orbit videos of what they do with the space shuttles and the ISS and all that. Yeah, that's I don't know, it's like a a big project and it's all trickery. I believe it. I believe it's it's going to be models and all that. But yeah, what else are they going to do? But I'm not really concerned about what I'm going to be shown by them on a screen. I'm much more concerned about how my eyes actually work and what I can see with them in the world, not on a screen. I 
I don't know, Flatter Spaceman, if you say so. But, but that's the crazy thing, isn't it? With a religion like the ball that has that is just mechanically so inept, so ridiculously suspended within disbelief, so so far so broken, so dependent on the the will to choose to ignore reality in order to believe it. It's so resting on that that any kind of little trinket that'll just like push the dream a little bit more into reality. Just one sighting of, oh, I see a satellite going past the moon. That means it's all real. Oh, space, it's all real satellites. Because I saw one image once. And that one image convinced me that despite everything I've ever learned is totally broken, that it's still true. That's it. That's the trick. It's, it's feed, it's religious mind food to help you delude yourself in doubling down on what you deep down know is wrong, but you can't handle the responsibility of allowing yourself to realize it and move on. Now, Flatter Spaceman, what I just described with the supposed satellite in front of the moon and all that, it, it's not a, <coughs> it's not really a black swan argument. I was just showing that the way ballers and ball believers deal with things is not the way we deal with things. Because they will take any type of visual thingy, a gadget, to emphasize the dream and they will use that to ignore the facts because that's really what what the, what it does is what how the system works there's the main priority is ignore as many facts as you can in order to maintain the machinations and all that and the belief that it's real that is it that is the mechanism that is the entire mechanism psychology and all how do we all together Keep fooling ourselves and each other, and what we're doing makes sense. That's the globe religion. Right, so yeah, I'm gonna round out the show. Uh, I th I hoped you liked it. I thought it was pretty good, actually. Pretty fluent. L very few pauses. Not too long-winded, I hope. I'll I'll have to listen back to this one. Uh, anyway, uh, do, do I need to go through something else, too? What else did I do? Uh, it's... No. No, that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, also what, oh god, I've been watching a new, a, like a, a liberal concept movie. And it is terrifying in a way, but it's also fascinating. There's a Netflix, god, movie called Downsizing. And it is so, it is so typical. It's like an aberration, it's a cultural aberration. It's like, I don't know, it, I thought it was a... As a concept movie, it is quite fascinating and terrifying because there is so much consequential, natural behavior, things, ways of thinking being actively ignored in this movie. And that seems to be the real thing about the movie is that it is, there's something really wrong about it. But it is also fascinating. And I haven't watched, finished it, finished watching it yet, but. I was pretty astounded by how far 
they took the concept serious. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting science fiction concept movie. And I'm definitely going to finish watching it. So, yeah, it's called Downsizing on Netflix. It is super Hollywood liberal. But, yeah, it's not like you're constantly being... It's not SJW. Well, in a way, it is. I think it's more environmentalism type of liberal angle aimed and all that. I don't know. It's just you got to see it to understand what I mean. It's... But it... Yeah. Anyway, I've seen it or a part of it. I'm going to fi finish watching it eventually. And uh, okay, yeah, maybe we'll talk about that later. But anyway, I am definitely going to round out the show now. So yeah, if you liked it, please don't forget the Rogan's up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm going live, which is normally 2 p.m. Amsterdam time every day. Please also do support me through the PayPal, Patreon, and my GoFundMe in the Super Chats. And thank you all that have donated to Super Chat and PayPal. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with Flat Earth Early Bird number 470. And I'm going to join the Flat Earth Debates that is that started up. I think it's already started up. Anyway, hashtag Mifa indeed Obermuckle. And yeah, until the next video, keep it flat. <laughs>